Today, I'm excited to show you the final production version of the Micro HD Zero camera. It's finally here. I know you're all really excited to get your hands on this camera, and I do actually have one of the final production versions here. So we're gonna take a look at that camera today. I'm gonna show you what you get in the box, give you an overview of the camera itself, talk about some changes that have happened since the beta version, and of course, we'll also look at some flight footage. This isn't really a full review of the camera. It's going to be more of an unboxing and my first impressions of it, but I know there's been a lot of interest in this camera, so I really wanted to get this out quickly so that you guys can all see what to expect when you get yours. So let's start with an overview of the camera. The box is a pretty similar FPV camera box. You've seen boxes like this many times before. As you can see, it has the Runcam logo on it. This camera is made by Runcam. Personally, that's something I'm excited about because I tend to like Runcam's cameras. In the box, you get the camera itself as well as a few mounting screws. One thing to note is that a MIPI cable is not included with this camera, so you'll need to pick one of those up to attach the camera to the VTX. Now, this is the same MIPI cable that the other SharkBite HD Zero cameras use, so if you already have some of those cables lying around, you can use one of those. But if you're using this on a new build, you'll want to make sure you pick up one of those cables. When you buy the camera from the HD Zero store, they do sell the cables, so just make sure you grab one. If we take a look at the camera itself, it's a micro-sized camera, so the dimensions are 19 by 19 millimeters. Now, one thing they added that I think is new for this production version is a back cover that covers the electronics on the back of the camera. That's a welcome addition. It's something that not every camera has. The previous version of the Runcam Nano did not have that cover, and it just kind of protects those electronics and keeps that uh, dirt and stuff like that from getting in there. The back cover on this one seems to be some kind of thick sticker, so I think you could probably pull it off if you wanted to. I don't know why you'd want to pull it off. Anyway, I'm glad to see that in this camera. I'll show you the weight of the camera here compared to the Runcam Nano HD. On the Nano camera, I do have the micro adapter so that you can get kind of a fair comparison if you were going to mount either of these onto the same drone. One thing I want to note about the physical design of this camera is that you'll notice there's a pretty short distance between the mounting screws and the front of the lens. And what that means is that depending on your frame, when you mount the camera into the frame, you might see standoffs from the frame on the edges of your camera view. So you may want to think about how you'd like to deal with that. I know I've seen some 3D prints out there where people have printed a little bracket to move the camera forward. That's actually what I ended up doing for my Diatone Taycan. So you can see I 3D printed this little bracket and it just shifted the camera forward a little bit to prevent that from being a concern. If that's something you're worried about, I know I've seen some 3D prints out there for common frames. So you might get on the HD Zero Facebook group or Discord server and ask in there and somebody might already have a design that can work for you. It's not that big of a deal, but I did want you guys to be aware of that so that if you think it's gonna be a problem for you, you can start thinking of a solution while you're waiting to receive your camera. Let's move on now and talk about what it's like to set up and use this camera. First, you're going to need a new firmware update to support the camera, and you'll see why in a moment. I'm sure that firmware is gonna be available really soon, and as soon as it's available, I'll put a link in the description of this video. I don't know what all will be included in that firmware besides support for this camera. I know the team's been busy with bug fixes and other improvements, so there may be some of those in the firmware as well. But the main reason you need new firmware is because they listen to the beta feedback, and in this final production version of the camera, there is a settings menu that you can access to change the image characteristics of the camera. This is something I'm really excited about because we all like different things out of our camera images, and now that we have a settings menu, we can tweak the camera to make the image look the way we want. You access that menu in the same way as the other HD Zero cameras. So you take the left stick and you move it all the way to the right, like you're yawing all the way to the right. And after about a second, the menu will pop up. You'll notice that the lettering's a lot more crisp and I felt like the sticks were a lot more responsive than they are in the other cameras. I think what's probably happening here is that the VTX is what's actually displaying this menu instead of the camera. Whatever it is, I'm really happy about it. I feel like this menu is a lot easier to read and it's a lot easier to work with than some of the ones that I've seen on the other HD Zero cameras. You get a couple of different settings you can adjust. So you have brightness, which is adjusted in numeric increments up and down. There's sharpness, which can be either normal or enhanced. And then there's saturation, which can be low, medium, or high. The setting that I found to be most impactful was the saturation, and you can really make some pretty big adjustments to the image with that setting. Now I've kind of got some mixed feelings about the fact that there's only three options here. On one hand, I really appreciate that I don't have to hem and haw about what number I want to pick, and as I pick between those three settings, it's really a pretty big shift in the character of this image. On the other hand, I'd love to be able to tweak it a little bit more, so I'd love to see some kind of advanced option for that. 
I think we're gonna find that most people prefer the medium saturation setting. Now, personally, I like really vivid images, so I found myself kind of liking that high saturation, but it does get pretty intense. What's great about this though, is that you can make the adjustments the way you want, and whichever of these images you prefer, you can get that with this new menu. In general, I'm really glad they added a settings menu. I'd like to see more settings in the future, so maybe it'd be cool if we could adjust white balance or day night mode, or like I'd said, if they had some sort of advanced mode where we could adjust these things by numbers instead of just the preset settings. But in general, I'm just really glad they added this menu. But what I know you guys really want to see is flight footage, and you want to know what it's like to actually fly with the Micro HD Zero camera, so we're going to take a look at some flights. I'm going to give the disclaimer here that I haven't really had a lot of flight time on this camera, and this weekend when I was flying the camera, it was pretty windy outside. You'll probably be able to see that in some of the clips. And so I don't have a full set of comparisons for you, and I can't give you like a, you know, a full detailed review of the image quality. But I do want you to see the footage, and I think it's gonna give you a good general idea of what you can expect from this camera, and honestly, I think you're gonna like what you see. Overall, I found the image to be really pleasing. The first thing I noticed were the colors. I feel like the bright colors stand out really well in this image, and overall, it looks really true to life. I think this image isn't quite as contrasty as the Runcam Nano HD image, but it has better color saturation than the Foxier Nano camera, and it isn't as flat as that camera's image. It also retains some of the benefits the Foxier camera had of seeing into shadows without compromising on the overall color and dynamic range of the image. Night performance was also very good with this camera. It felt like it retained color really well in the well-lit areas, and overall I think it was the best HD Zero camera image I've seen at night. In darker areas, you'll notice that there's quite a bit of color ISO noise from the sensor, and so that, you know, the image doesn't look as great, but I really appreciate that I'm still able to see where I'm going, and I felt like the overall performance in this dark environment was much better than either of the nano cameras. If I needed to pick an HD Zero camera for flying at night, I'd absolutely pick this camera. To sum it up, the image quality met or exceeded my expectations. I feel like this camera imparts very little of its own character on the image, and I mean that as a good thing. So the image feels very true to life, and I don't feel like it's overemphasizing or underemphasizing any aspect of the image. You know, the Nano cameras are not this way. Both the Runcam Nano and the Foxier camera both have kind of a very strong characteristic to their images, and you have to decide which of those you prefer. On the other hand, with this new Micro HD Zero camera, I feel like the image I'm getting is just you know, kind of exactly what I would see in real life, and it's not giving any commentary on that image. So I, I really appreciate that I'm getting just a, a smooth, even image from the camera. So now that you've seen the Micro HD Zero camera itself and had a chance to look at some flight footage, I want to give you some of my own opinions. Now, I think it's pretty obvious that I'm pretty excited for this camera, and I'm excited for you guys to get your hands on it as well. You know, I really feel like this camera raises the bar for the HD Zero system. The existing nano cameras are pretty good. I mean, they're a lot better than analog cameras, but I think we've all known that those cameras have some shortcomings that are kind of holding the system back from realizing its true potential. And with this new Micro HD Zero camera, I feel like it's raising the quality bar, and it's really showing us kind of the true potential of what we can get from the HD Zero system. Now, I doubt this camera is the peak. I think there's probably even more that can be done to improve that quality, but this is so much better than what we already have. If you're looking to buy an HD Zero camera today, this is clearly your best choice. I also want to say that I think the development process of this camera is something that should be encouraging to us as users. So you may remember a few months ago, this camera was about to come out and then Carl found a problem that affected something like 5% of the units. And he decided that instead of releasing the camera, they would send those units out as beta tests to some users and then they'd go back and fix the problem before they actually released the camera. And you know, I know it's been really hard for us to wait for that final release, and some people have been getting kind of impatient waiting for it, but I think it's really good that they decided to do this. I mean, how many times have we bought a product, whether it's FPV or something else, and you know, you receive it and it's kind of half-baked or it has some bugs in it, and you know, that's not a good feeling as a user. It's kind of frustrating and you feel like you spent your money and didn't get what you wanted. And so I really appreciate the commitment to quality that they're showing by making sure that the camera was as good as it can be before it's released. And that beta test actually also showed us that they do listen to user feedback. So the original version of the camera didn't have that settings menu and they added that because that's something users wanted. So, you know, it just makes me feel good. It's great to see that they're listening to user feedback and they're really trying to give us a good product and something that's free from bugs. And it gives me a lot of confidence in this camera. 
So guys, that's gonna do it for this overview. I hope you enjoyed this first look at the production version of the Micro HD Zero camera. I'm really excited for this release and I know a lot of you are excited to get your hands on it. So make sure you head over to the HD Zero store and place your order. I'll have a link down in the description below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.